Sì, anche io. Ok. Good morning and welcome to this webinar organized by the WinterMed project, which is a project founded by uh, the Interreg Mediterranean program. Uh, and the, the WinterMed project uh, aim is to, um, to gather uh, lessons learned from other ended and ongoing projects with the aim to support sustainable tourism in the Mediterranean island. So before uh, introducing the topic of today, I would like to introduce the team and give you some technical information. So I'm Jasmine Andreaus, and I will moderate this webinar today with the support of Lorena Vidas from Manci Toscana and Massimiliano Gini from Confesercenti Toscana, uh, who uh, coordinate the webinar behind the scenes. Uh, the webinar will last uh, around 45 minutes and it will be recorded so you can uh, find it together with our previous webinars on the project website uh, and uh, also uh, on the YouTube project uh, uh, page. So uh, I would like to spend a word concerning the fact that we strongly invite you to ask a question <laughs> to our guest. Uh, there will be a session dedicated uh, Q&A session at the end of this webinar. Um, however, do, during the webinar, if you, if you want to, uh, if some questions arise, you can write them uh, down in the chat box and we will discuss them later on. Also, uh, we please you to uh, turn off your micro and camera. So concerning the today's topic, we are speaking about a promotional strategy called Better in Winter, developed in the touristic frame of Balearic Island. This promotional uh, campaign concerns a set of uh, actions uh, that successfully managed to boost the medium and low tourist season in four uh, destinations, Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza, and Formentera. So this promotional campaign, um, let's say it's strictly linked to another good practice, which is the sustainable tourism tax, uh, which will present with a dedicated webinar uh, this Thursday, 2nd July. So, stay tuned because we have another webinar uh, linked to this uh, good practice. So today we are hosting Margalita Picornel, responsible for the area of European assumption of tourism in the Balearic Island, who's going to talk to us about the Better in Winter strategy. Welcome, Margalita. Hi, good morning, everyone. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Thank you to be there and to, to no give problem. us uh, some of your time to present uh, this good, good practice. A so a if pleasure. you agree, I, I will leave you the floor for your presentation. Okay. More than just a strategy, I will explain to you the whole tourism uh, strategy that we are following in the government. The government, the regional government of the Balearic Islands, uh, we, it, it's, it's like um, an umbrella because we are the government for the four islands you just mentioned. So if you want to start sharing the presentation, please. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, next one. So this is, uh, this is uh, some information about the four Balearic Islands and the brands. You can see the four brands. Every island has been assigned a color because of the brand. Uh, so the islands, uh, the biggest is Mallorca, you know, and we're very close to, well, in the middle of the Mediterranean and very close to the different uh, different European cities, very close, just two hours away from the main big European cities. Uh, so next one. This is to give you an idea of how big is tourism is in the Balearic Islands. Uh, last year we had around 6,400,000 tourists. The majority of them, as you can see in the top, they come by air, 20,000 passengers, 20, 20, 
20 million passengers, sorry, and just 6 million passengers come by our harbors. So um, it's a big issue, uh, 16 million tourists every year for the four Balearic Islands is it's a lot of tourism. So we had lots of pressure on our resources. I'll tell you why later on. Uh, so, well, you can see accommodation capacity is full for, for 1,000 beds. Uh, last, last year, two years ago, we limited the capacity up to a roof of 400,000. That means that no more beds are allowed in the Balearic Islands at this moment. It's enough. With 400,000 beds, we have more than enough to, for our tourists. Uh, and then, as you can see, 225,000 beds, hotel beds. It's huge and so on. So uh, tourism is a big, big, big issue for us. As you can see, um, the majority of them, uh, they, they are international, 83%. And they mostly come from Germany and the UK and 60% are from Spain. Uh, and they leave a huge amount of money. So tourist expenditure, the total is 16,000 million euros. And this accounts a lot on our GDP. 35% of our economy depends on tourism directly. I'm not counting the indirect effects, which this would go up to 40, 45%. And 32% of the jobs. So it's a huge, huge tourism system in the Balearic Islands. Next one, please. No, the other way. This one, okay. This is to let you see uh, the distribution of these six million tourists. The majority of them, around 72%, to seven, 72% they come to Mallorca Islands. Uh, almost 20% to Ibiza and Formentera, and the rest goes to Menorca. So as you can see, 11 million have arrived last year to Mallorca, and 3 million to Ibiza and Formentera. They are put together because there's just one airport. We have three airports, Palma, Maon, Menorca, and Ibiza. And to go to Formentera, as you may know, because most, most of people know the island, you have to take a ferry boat from Ibiza. So this is the distribution. The majority of the tourists, they come to Mallorca. Next one, please. Uh, this is for nationalities. To, get, to give you an idea of what nationalities do we have. Um, the first graph is Balearic Islands in total, then Mallorca on the top right, then Menorca, bottom left, and Ibiza, Formentera, bottom right. The majority of our tourism comes from Germany, as I told you, 28%. Then our second major market is the UK, with 22% of the arrivals. Then the Spanish tourism, we have lots of Spanish tourism. Uh, Benelux, uh, then the Nordic countries, Nordic countries, we mean Sweden, Norway, Denmark and Finland, uh, Italy, France and whatever. So as you can see, we have a mix of different nationalities, mostly from Europe. They come from Europe, our tourism. But if we look differently, each island has different kind of tourism, meaning that Mallorca, the majority is 36% is German. So we have more Germans than in the rest of the islands. Then Ibiza, as you can see, has a lot of uh, Spanish tourism and the UK tourism. Then Menorca with 37% is people from the UK. This is because in the, in the seventh century, Menorca Island was part of the British Empire, was, was, yeah, was, uh, had domination from the French and from the uh, from the UK, from the from the British. 
So because of that, the, 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 the Brits, they love Menorca Island and they prefer to go to Menorca than, rather than the other islands. But whereas as you can see, we have all of them. And uh, in Formentera, we have lots of Italians, lots of Italians. They love Formentera, they, uh, in Ibiza, and uh, they open restaurants. So Italy is a big, big market in Ibiza, Formentera. Next one, please. Well, why? Why are we the preferred destination for them? Why do they like us? Well, because of our climate. We have 300 sunny days, and I'm not exaggerating. It's statistics. 300 sunny days a year is a lot. Uh, then, because we are very, very close to the main European cities, uh, from Paris in two hours you can be here sunbathing. Then we have uh, excellent health services and infrastructure in comparison to the rest of the Mediterranean uh, uh, destinations. We have a fast and efficient public transport. We have very good specialized hotel, open all year round, incentives, team building, and so on. And because of the relaxed Mediterranean culture, uh, people, they, they love our, our places and to stay and to drink something at the beach at night. Well, as you can imagine, if we have the possibility, I'll take you there within Winter Met project, of course. So next one, please. Here is just to show you uh, our flight connectivity, our main airports. Our main airports are the top one. I'm just telling you the, the top five, okay? The top five is, first one is Dusseldorf with around 800, well, you can say 900,000 passengers per year. So Dusseldorf is our first. London Gatwick is the second main airport coming to the Balearic Islands. Third is Frankfurt, then Manchester, and the fifth one is Munich. So you can see we have a lot of dependence on the two major markets, the Brit British and the, um, and the German markets. Next one, please. Um, this is um, to let you know that we, uh, we have lots of different things to do. We have culture, we have nature, we have uh, lots of different products. We are uh, a top tourism destination and we have three, well, two UNESCO World Heritage Sites that normally the people don't know. One UNESCO World Heritage Site is uh, Dalbiza, Dalvila, Ibiza, which is Ibiza. The, um, this one, this one on, the, on the left, this is Ibiza, which is, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site for the culture. And then for the nature, we have in Mallorca, the northern mountains of the island, which is called Serra de Tramontana. This, this, um, this, um, uh, um, these mountains go from the north of Mallorca to the, to, the, to the other corner of the island. So it's a huge mountain range and it's beautiful landscape. You, wouldn't, uh, you, you would be impressed because the inside of Mallorca is very flat. And then you have the woof, the very high mountains with 1,500 meters high. So it's impressive. And then the third island, Menorca, is Biosphere Reserve. So the island, in this sense, is very well protected uh, environmentally. 80% of the island is environmentally protected, is green island. So, so uh, all the activities are very, very well um, planned and very well organized not to interfere with the environment. Next one, please. Well. Uh, who we are. As I told you, we are the Agency for Tourism. We belong to the Ministry of Tourism of the regional government, so we are responsible for the four islands. Apart from of these, every island, they have competences on territory, on tourism promotion and planning, of course. 
and they have their own competencies. So that means that we have to work very close as government with the insular councils, which are the islands councils, because we have to go on the same direction. There would be no meaning that we do big promotional campaign fairs at regional level without the support of the different islands, of the four islands, because every island has an island council. So we, as government, uh, we have worked in those two ways. First one, sustainability. We have uh, promoted, we want to become a sustainable destination through the uh, sustainable tourism tax. And then the second main strategy is develop the tourism strategy for the Balearic Islands in terms of seasonality, because the majority of tourism, the 60, the 60 million, they come in summer from April until October. And that is a huge, huge push on the resources of the island. We are an island. We, uh, we don't have that much water to drink, not, not that much water to um to to bath and so on so last summer we had to do uh, together with the ministry of environment and tourism we with them we worked together and we did an, a campaign to make conscious the tourists that here you cannot take showers three times a day because we the locals we don't do it we, we have one shower a day and it's enough because we know that it doesn't rain with 300 days, as I told you, a year of sun. How do you expect rain to come? So rain is very, very scarce. So we did a campaign on the on the airports last year. We put a box like this, this size, more or less, like a voting voting to vote box. You know the one I mean with the metal crilato. And we put the, this amount of water compared to other cities in Europe. And they were astonished, the tourists, because they said, wow, that's the water you have for one day per person. And we said, yes, that's it, no more. And it was a very impressive campaign and it worked. Because our tourists here, when they come, uh, because it's hot and it's summer and it's around 36, they shower three, four or five times. They don't care about the tap. They leave it open with the water running and this is not good. So we had to do a campaign to stop and to conscience the people to save water. Please tourists, save water. Because 16 million tourists, they, you do have to help us saving water, please. So two main strategies in terms of governments are put in place. One, to promote sustainability. Second, to, uh, fight, to fi fight against the seasonality. How do we fight against the seasonality? Through the better in winter strategy and through what we call strategic tourism segments. Strategic tourism segments is like uh, putting together in the same table the private and the public sector with um, along seven products. One is gastronomy, the other one is culture, uh, health and uh, health and beauty. What else? Luxury, mice. Mice is conventions, incentives and meetings, mice. Uh, Ecotourism and active tourism. So that means that every strategic tourism segment puts together public and private uh, stakeholders and they decide everything on that product. So they decide which islands do we promote, which market do we go to promote this product, and um, product, island and market, that's it, yeah. So, so yes, as you can see, the two good practices that I will, will be presenting you, one, better in winter, responds to this strategy, and the other one, the sustainable tourism stats, responds to the other lack of the work, the sustainability strategy. So next one, please. Okay, why do we put in place these two strategies on 2016, why? 
Well, because as I told you, 16 and almost a half million tourist arrivals a year concentrated in summer is huge amount. So we needed to do something. And, uh, and um, despite the situation that the tourism stopped, the trend for the last years has been growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. So we, we had to do something to stop. Uh, second thing, many tourism businesses, they do only operate six or seven months a year. Although we work very hard with them to get the shops and get everything open in winter. Because six and seven months of operation per year creates job insecurity. Because the people then they have to go home and then maybe they are not be called back again to work and these things. So why do we have these increasing numbers? Because for the last years, we had lots of people coming or tourists coming from the competitors, the Mediterranean competitors, because they had very bad situation, difficult situations. And they said, okay, I'm going to Mallorca because I know it's safe, it's close and I feel home, okay. So we um, gained tourism because of that. Uh, we have seen as many, many destinations in Spain and also in Italy and in the south of uh, Europe, increasing demand for vacation rentals. So we put, um, last year in August, we put a law, a new law, uh, saying that all the vacation rentals, they should have our, um, they should be legal. They should um, be authorized by us, by the Ministry of Tourism. If you are not authorized and you don't put the number, the, 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 the register, official registration number, on the promotion you have, you got fine. So we uh, we put a fine to Airbnb. I think it was last year, if I don't remember well, of uh, three hundred thousand euros because of uh, promoting vacation rentals of the Balearic Islands without authorization. But also the owners they had to pay. So we find the platform doing so and we find the owner for not being legal so since then since i think it was last year or maybe it was two years ago uh people is more conscious because before what we had it was somebody that had a nice fly ni nice flat in the center of palma they said okay i'm going to rent it to tourists and then I'll, i will get i don't know maybe twelve thousand euros uh, a season and they, go, they went to, the, to another house and they left their own house to the tourists. So to stop this situation, we did that law. And it worked because now people is very, very, very careful because paying a 300,000 fine is a lot of money for the platform and 40,000 euros, you as owner, is huge money. So now it's, it's a way of controlling the, the, the market. Uh, what, uh, the fifth reason, because we are islands, we have uh, limitations because of small territory, limited resources, as I told you, like the water, limited infrastructure, so we could not cope with 16 million a year. Besides of this, we had lots of, um, uh, like in Barcelona, uh, some people that started, the locals started to complain about saturation. Uh, perceived saturation by the locals, I mean. They started to complain, we cannot go to the beaches, the beaches are crowded, the streets are crowded, the roads, the high roads, everything is crowded, and they were right. So um, I, thank, I thank God for this uh, COVID situation, because thanks to this, now in the island, um, although we started a pilot plan, uh, now the residents, they're happy, and they feel not being invaded now. Uh, so you can go, um, I think the COVID will be a way of, uh, uh, will help us to diminish the number of tourists a bit. So that's, that's a good thing. Uh, then another reason I told you is the seasonality. Yes, all tourists concentrated in summer. It was uh, not sustainable at all. Uh, the perceived saturation I told you, and then we had a lot 
although we have, as I told you, different tourism products like culture, like health, like astronomy, like luxury, like da da da, um, we still, 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 still depend on sun and sea tourism and on the big tour operators to bring us tourism. Next one, please. Thank you, Massimiliano, you're doing great. Uh, so, I don't know if you know it, but Balearic Islands is the second most important region for tourism in Spain. First one is Catalonia, of course. Second is Balearic Islands. Third is uh, Canary Islands, and then so on. Uh, so, uh, blah, 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 blah. So yes, because I told you that we depend very much on mass tourism, this means that we have high seasonality and significant impacts on the, the local economy and on the environment. So uh, we put in place lots of uh, the new laws and the new actions um, done by the Balearic Islands, the government have been put towards favoring sustainability. I mean, the law on climate change and energy transition. We limited the transit of vehicles in areas of outstanding natural interest. Like an example, in Formentera Island is very small and you have to get registration to go there with your own car. That means that they have a number of cars per day that can circulate the island and you have to ask permission to the Insula Council to go around with your car. Otherwise, you're not, you're not permitted. And this is why, yeah, because they're very fragile and a very small island. So another one is the environment and the tourism balance plan. Uh, as I told you, we limited the expansion of tourist accommodation up to a roof of 400,000 beds. That's it. We have a new waste law, law on the waste. We regulated the tourist rentals, right? told you before uh, and so on uh, we were together with the hotels to improve the energy efficiency in the tourist areas and now since January this year we have a new regulation on over tourism because um, in some spots of Mallorca meaning Calvia, Magaluf, I don't know if you heard of it, we had some bad behaviors from the British tourists. They used to go naked on the streets, the drugs and sex uh, and so on. So now they get fined. If you behave very badly, uh, you get a, fine, a, fine, uh, a high fine up to 900 and you have to pay the 900 or the 600 or the 300. It depends on, the, on, the, yeah, on what you've done. Uh, and they don't leave the island unless they pay. So this is an example of the over-tourism regulation because it needed to be done. Inside the over-tourism regulation, there is also those people that jump from the, to the pools from the hotel um, rooms. They also get fined yeah, because in summer they drink and they take drugs and they jump. And then that was a big problem in our health system because we had um, lots of injuries. And so something should have to be done. So uh, since July 2016, we want to shift from mass tourism to a more sustainable, more competitive, more responsible and more quality tourism through those two strategies, the better in winter and the sustainable tourism tax. Next one, please. Well, that's, that's an example of the curve. Uh, as you can see, 2016, 17, 18, 19, you see that between April or May, let's say May and October, we have the peak. Being June, June July and August, the, the top, top, the top peak with, uh, yeah, with uh, lots of, uh, in July, in one day, our airport in Palma has capacity to receive in one day 
listen to me, in one day, 200,000 passengers in one day. It's a huge number for just one day. But, so um, thanks to better in winter, as you can see, in, uh, we, we slowly, step by step, if you see the edges of the curve in January, February, March, and November, October, December, we have uh, achieving, but slowly, because this takes time um, to flat a bit the curve and bring some more tourists in winter. And next one, please. The other thing is the brochure on the right. Okay, so what's the purpose of this strategy. We want to encourage the tourists to come in medium and low season. So uh, we, how? Inviting them to discover the Balearic Islands beyond the summer period. So we tell them that they can do different other things in, uh, in winter. And we invite them to know the most authentic and unknown side of our islands. And those that you see, the seals, those seals are the, um, the strategic tourism segments that I told you before, that we have sports, culture, um, gastronomy, um, health, and so on. And then every year, we, uh, the Agency for Tourism, we have an action plan. The action plan is all the uh, activities that we will do for one year. And um, we, uh, we, are, we received an ISO certification, ISO, do you know this? And we, were, uh, we received an ISO certification because we are the first agency, public agency in Spain that has an ISO quality model in place. The ISO quality model means that our procedures of work are very structured and we have, um, we have uh, indicators for work. And at the beginning it was very tough because we are, we are um, uh, civil servants and we were not used to work this way. But now everything is very well calculated and very well done. So, so yes, we're happy to have this um, quality service commitment for the, because we give services to other administrations and we give services to the citizens and to the tourism enterprises, of course. Uh, next one, please. So yes, the objective of this uh, Better in Winter strategy is to decrease in summer and diversificate and increase in winter. Because, because we need to achieve a balance of the tourism activity. We have to stop promoting summer to focus on the low season. In fact, the Balearic Islands, there's no need of promoting sun and sea because they, the tourists, they do come alone. They do come alone by themselves, meaning that the, there's no need of promotion. So now we, uh, we promote the low season. Uh, and yes, we invest our resources in getting visitors to know about our winter possibilities, our winter resources, the events and the tourist products that we have in place. So step by step, we gradually achieve a better tourism model that is based on sustainability. Next one. Well, uh, what have we done within Better in Winter? Apart from the regulations of the, of the, the, the laws and so on that I told you, and the new decree to combat balconing, drunkenness and non-civic tourism, uh, for Better in Winter specifically, we did editions in Catalan, Spanish, French, English, German and Italian of Better in Winter leaflet. The Better in Winter leaflet tells you per month what you can do on the different four islands. Then, because we have um, international press in Mallorca, we have German and the British press, the, that they, they are done here on the island. 
so they help us to distribute, freely distribute at the airport gate, the leaflet inside the um, daily uh, magazine. Uh, Mallorca Daily Bulletin is one of the, 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 the newspapers. Um, Mallorca Magazine, that, that is Deutsch, uh, and so on. So then, apart from this, we did uh, public relations actions in the many European tourist markets in Germany, France, Spain, U Italy, and the UK, which let know what, what, that we had this strategy in place through press notes, press releases, through presentations, through interviewing, um, um, how do you say that, people that can recommend you, uh, bloggers, no. I don't know, uh, prescriptors, that's it. Press trips and so on. We organize press trips here to visit us in the Balearic Islands to see what we have to offer in, in winter. And we did also farm trips, which uh, press trips are for the press to write about your destination and farm trips, that stands for families, familiarization trips. And those are for the travel agents to know about our products. Uh, we presented at uh, the main tourism fairs, Fitur, the World Travel Market, and the IT, um, ITB, the Berlin. The, we presented the strategy, and we, apart from this, the promotion side, every year we launch calls for the SMEs and for the, um, the enterprises to present themselves to the, the, the call for sponsorships and co-marketing actions. Next one. So, what is this sponsorship and collaboration program? Um, public entities and private companies, they can apply. Following the following rules, they have to comply with this, these rules first. So every year we launch this sponsorship and we give money to them to do different actions. It can be to creating new products, making new projects, actions, performances, celebrations, conferences, meetings, congresses, symposia, forums, and so on. All of them, they have to contribute to promote tourism in winter or to tourism diversification of the four islands. And they should prove that they will really bust tourism outside the summer season. They have to promote the seasonalization, the, tour, the winter products, all year round employment and so on. And they have to be linked, of course, of one of the brands. They have to be uh, linked to promote Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza and Formentera. Or an action that affects the four, uh, the four islands altogether. Uh, next one. Well, this is an example of how uh, it looks like the brochure. So, uh, next one. You can see that here it tells you, as an example, Menorca. In January, you can see, uh, you can visit the British and the fortress route. In Mallorca, you can visit the caves. And Ibiza, there are a dramatized visit to the Phoenician necropolis and so on. Or you can go to Rafa Nadal Sports Center, which is beautiful. And I hope I can take you there, which is amazing. I, I, I love Rafa. He's amazing, Rafa. He's a very nice person and very plain, very simple. You can talk to him. He's amazing. Next one, please. So this is an example of the leaflet. Okay, who are the stakeholders for this good practice? The strategy was carried out together with, uh, well, it's carried out uh, for the four islands and with joint collaboration with the different insular councils. Who are the main beneficiaries? The tourists and the tourism industry. Why? Because we create new products, we promote tourism in winter and so on. Beneficiaries, tourists, because they know, and the tourism industry, because we have more offer on place. Resources. More or less, when we started in 2017, 
It costed a uh, half million euros to put it in place to start. And the cost of the call for sponsorship this year is 480,000 euros, plus some, the cost of a specific promotional action that we've done. And the human resources is staff, our staff, the agency staff, and the uh, public relation agencies that help us to spread the word outside the Balearic Islands in the European markets. Uh, okay, it started in March 2016 and still is ongoing. Next one. Results and the lesson learned. Uh, after one year of application, we noted in the statistics of tourist arrivals that the number of tourist arrivals in the months just before and after the summer considerably increased. And as I told you before, still does. Slowly, but still does. So this demonstrates that better in winter works for the Balearic Islands because it helps the tourists to know what we have in winter to offer. And so if they know what we have in winter, they can come and they can plan better their holidays. The lessons learned. Um, the campaign was very well received by the tourists because they, they are happy to know what, what we have on offer in winter. And we measured this through our social networks and through the comments they made at the airports and at the resort. Next one. Okay, why is this uh, GP potentially interesting for other regions? We think it is potentially interesting to other regions uh, if they wish to balance tourism influxes and progressively move towards a more sustainable. Uh, it emphasizes to the world the uniqueness and the genuine aspects of the destination, and it is adequate for tourist destinations that year after year face large numbers of tourism, and that they really need to diversify their offer and to promote what they have different from the other competitors. Next one. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Margalida. Um, thank you for, for getting us informed about the interesting uh, Baleari government, uh, is, uh, the activities he's carrying on in order to preserve the island, its citizens, and of course, the tourists as well. So um, through the regulations, leaflets, uh, Main, activity, main activities, international press edition, um, peer with uh, uh, the main uh, tourist markets, uh, and also participation in uh, tourism fair. It's just uh, are some of the activities uh, Baleari, Baleari government uh, is, uh, is carrying uh, on to, to deal with uh, the, the, um, the seasonality. So now uh, let's see if uh, there is some questions in the chat box. So we can start with the uh, question and answer session. At the moment, I cannot see uh, questions. So maybe uh, they, will, uh, they will come. Um, I have a question for you, <laughs> just okay, to break the ice. <laughs> <house. laughs> so, um, the question is, um, so better in winter strategy was conceived before the, um, the, the COVID-19 virus arrived. Yes. So today the situation is a bit changed. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think this strategy can also be used to meet uh, the new needs uh, that we are facing? Uh, yes, I think so. I think they're compatible. The problem now is to restart the tourism activity. Uh, for this, we put in plan an action, a, a pilot plan, uh, bringing 10,000 Germans last week to the Balearic Islands. And that was the pilot. We worked together with, uh, with uh, TUI, the tour operator, and why did we choose the Germans? Because the Germans, they had a similar health 
situation like us in terms of um, of uh, yeah in terms of the COVID situation they they had the same preventions and so on and because it's one of the major markets so we brought them in um, in planes the ones that came and were not inside the plan they were sent back home and the 10,000 were uh, distributed around the four islands. And they were so happy, those tourists, so happy, that now all the tour operators and other airlines have contacted us to put more, pl more plans in place for this summer. So when this started, we thought maybe we will lose the season or maybe if we can get some recovery, it will be no more than 20-25% of uh, recovery, of tourism. Uh, but as it works so well, it works so well that, uh, well, we think that the, the hotels will, are now starting to reopen again. And I think we will be fully, well, not fully, but maybe at 70 or 60% by August. We will get 70, which is mm -hmm. a success. Tremendous success. Um, so yes, um, the sustainable tourism tax, we stopped cashing it because we it's getting collected at the accommodations. So we stopped getting it because of the situation. Uh, but they, it, it, they will still be in place. As soon as we restart the, 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 the whole situation, then it will be put back in place because it's money that goes invested, and I'll tell you on Thursday, goes directly invested in the territory. So the tourists, they can benefit from it and we, the residents as well. Mm -hmm. So I think both the strategies, they can live together. Now, uh, our operations as government have been centered in recovering the economy, recovering as soon as possible, the, the tourist activity to guarantee health. So we work together with the hoteliers and so on to put the measures, the health measures in place. Uh, those tourists that arrive to the airport, they had to fill in a questionnaire, mm -hmm. health questionnaire and deliver it to uh, foreign health services. I don't know how it's called. And they also get measured the, the, the temperature when they arrive. And if we, if we see something strange, we put them in special hotels that we have for them, for the ones feeling sick. Uh, so the priorities were this one, to health and to recover the, 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 the activity as soon as possible. We did not do any promotion in Better in Winter, although we have in place the sponsorship call, is, uh, un, until the end of the year is still open, until the money goes, disappears, goes, uh, it's finished. Uh, and um, we did not do promote because there's no sense of promoting better in winter if at this moment, it doesn't make sense. But, but yes, as soon as we get um, the, the market, then we will do it again. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you to, to answer to my, to my question. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, some question more arrived, so we broke definitely the ice. Uh, so I um, will go through the questions. Uh, yes. There is a question from Lorena. Uh, was yeah. the sponsorship pr program successful in terms of the, the number of SMEs applying? And what was the allocation for the individual grant to an enterprise? Yes. It was very, very much successful. Um, and we knew it, yeah. In terms of crisis, when there is crisis, everybody comes to the administration to get some money and to get help. Uh, in the previous years, it was not controlled. But how do they get the money? Well, we through statistical formula and through... We calculate, or the, the we have a how to how do you call? We created a, a way of calculating the grant that you have to perceive in terms of the return you will give us or you will give to the destination. So, um, 
through mathematic formula, we calculate the return in terms of economic return, in terms of media presence and so on, the return of investment, I mean, and we calculate automatically the, um, yeah, the social, the economic benefits that your action will lead to the destination. And it's calculated, an example. Imagine that we have uh, an, an SME that is organizing uh, a concert in winter and uh, is wishing and plans to bring to, um, tourists from Europe to, to, uh, to be at the concert and, uh, and so on. So we calculate through formula this in comparison to, let's say, an Iron Man or to, um, I don't know, uh, a big race that will be promoted abroad and will have more. The, more. the more return, the more money you get, up to 12,000 euros. From 3,000 up to 12,000 euros. So it depends, it depends. So it, it also takes into account well, the, the, the participants, it takes into account the month is not the same to bring tourists in uh, January that bring tourists to May. So the formula changes. So if it's May, in it's high season, close to high season, so less, less marks you get. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm, yes, More or less? clear for me. Uh, I don't know for Lorena, but I think she can intervene otherwise. Um, I think it is uh, everything clear. Yeah, no? Okay, uh, perfect. <laughs> so it, it is a way. It is a way of not selling something that. Yeah, because in the past, okay, everybody came and said, "I have this beautiful event, and I will bring lots of people." And then we gave them money, and the, it was fake. It was fake. So like this, okay, this is your project. We have this one, and we have this one, and everyone depending on the, the quality, the people they bring in, the return of investment in media, the blah, 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 you get a number. It's not me telling you, it is the system. I'm calculating. The more, the more winter you get, the more points you get. The more repercussion you grow, the, the more points you get, and so on. Da, 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 da. Okay. So it's not me saying it, it's the system. And, and like this, it was very shocking the first time at the beginning at the SME. Wow, I just got 3,000. I can do nothing with 3,000. Well, yes, you can print brushes or you can do other things. So it was a way of making them conscious that, yeah, you have to also be good with the, your resources. You have to plan very carefully what you do and be more productive. So it was a way of... Uh, Changing the way they think. Before it was, okay, give me money. And now it's, no. Mm -hmm. I have to be better than another event. So they're now they're, they're better. Yes, different sensibilization. Okay, um, there is another question from Edic. Yeah. How many tourists uh, do you have right now? Well, the, the, the ones that we have in the pylons, around 12,000, but uh since the beginning of july i think all the all the gates are open in, in in europe and we don't know how many we will have because now we have we know that some hotels are open but uh we don't know because we know that there are lots of this created a, a, a good promotion abroad but the, the controlled ones are the pilot. And now we will launch a new pilot for 12,000 more. But the thing is that if the airlines start selling, we will have to do something to control them or send them back home. Because now the capacity, the ones that are open the, are the ones that are safe. And we, we promote ourselves as a, safe as a safe destination because we are a safe destination. So we will be careful with the numbers because we don't want to waste everything like this. Of course. Um, another question is from Max Massimiliano. 
how difficult was it to involve the tourist companies to convince them, for example, to remain open even in winter, after hotels, restaurants, bars and shops closed? Well, we had to work together with uh, Palma City Council, we had to work together with uh, the Chamber of Commerce and, and so on. And it's like, it's like a circle. The more shops, the more people go, the more they, they, they sell. So the, shop instead, the shops, year after year, they, they, they tend to open more. At the beginning, uh, we just had some uh, on Christmas periods, on Easter, and so on. But um, as they see that they were, they were tourists coming for shopping and so on, they decided to open. Even on Sundays, they are open now in Palma, the shops, they are open because the tourists, they come to buy. But be, to do that, you have to talk to the municipality, to leave or and to the government, to the commerce government, to, to allow the shops to be open in sun, on Sundays and so on. So it's, uh, it's, it was tough at the beginning because there was work to be done before legally to get the shops open and then as tourists they come they they spread the word and they told everybody oh yes i went last christmas to mallorca and it was open on sunday oh it was and they come of course so it was not easy at the beginning but then when they see that uh, something happened and the people uh, the tourists comes during the winter and also the government's uh, action was uh, important. Yes. So they, yes. There is a, a demand for Balearic Islands in winter. Well, not over all the island, because we depend on the connectivity. Menorca, in winter, we have to work a lot to get more flights connection, because in winter, Menorca doesn't, but Palma and Mallorca has a lot of connections in winter. And Ibiza, mm. almost the same, not that much. Mallorca is the one that has most. But, but yes, before there is the, the legal thing that you have to arrange and then when everything is set up, then the tourists, they, they can come. Okay, thank you. We also have the cruise, the cruise ships, they also mm -hmm. come in winter. Yes. And it's huge number of passengers, the cruise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's also this kind of work uh, to do. Together. Mm -hmm. Together, yes. Um, another question is from Mary. In what uh, means of transport one can reach Balearic in winter? So you maybe uh, have already Airplane? answered to this question, but uh, yes, please. Yes, by, by airplane, mostly. By airplane, yeah. yes. Almost, yeah, 87, close to 90% is by air. Mm. Yeah. And you have to come through Madrid or Barcelona in winter because direct flights, we have direct flights in winter from Germany, from the UK, of course, and from Italy and from France. The major markets are covered. But okay. yes, if you come from, uh, yeah, you have to search. Yes, yes, you see, yes. because you have to come to Palma anyway. And I think that our, the meeting is in winter. <laughs> so. So you you um, you saw uh, at first you what you have done is just uh, check and see and do some research about uh, uh, the table you uh, showed us uh, before. So about the main uh, the main spot they come from, and then you uh, started to take some deal with uh, uh, these uh, these countries, these cities, and also. Um, aircraft, I don't know, in order to improve also the flight uh, during, the, um, during the winter? No, we uh, work together with the airlines. With always. the airlines, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we see the possibilities of new flights and if it worked and so on. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, another question is from, uh, uh, comes from uh, Gorana. Are all airports open and how many flights you have right now? To what destinations and what about winter flights? And we are always in the same topic. 
Well, the three airports are open. Palma is open, Menorca is open, and Ibiza is open. Uh, how many flights? Not that many. Not that many. To what destinations? With the German and the UK, mostly. What about the winter flights well, that, that we talked about before? Uh, in winter, uh, we have good connections with Italy, with France, Germany, and the UK. And Spain, but I'm not counting Spain, yeah. Okay. But I don't think there are that many flights at this moment, not, not very much. No. Uh, we have also another contribution from uh, Christina Bersic, uh, who thank you very much for your interesting <laughs> and clear presentation. My pleasure. And also, I uh, have a question for you. Uh, how locals react to your ideas, plans, and laws? Are you satisfied with how they follow the strategy? Uh, the locals, they're very sensitive to sustainability, very much. And they, they, um, they like the, 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 the ideas in place because, uh, yeah, as, as I told you, we had to do something with large numbers. And mm. it benefits them if there are uh, those uh, sustainability lines on place. Less cars in Formentera, less people at the beaches and so on, at the, at the streets, so they're happy. Uh, if we are satisfied, yes, we're satisfied, yeah, with the strategy. Because it, um, the majority of the people, they work directly or indirectly on tourism. So, yeah, they have a shop or they have a souvenir or they have, even the hard dressers, they have uh, tourists going there. So we all depend on tourism here on the Balearic Islands. And this is why we were so worried about the, the COVID situation because it affected um, 170,000 workers and people from, yeah, from one day to another, bah, everybody shut down and no work and nothing. And it was a terrible situation because we very much depend, everybody works on tourism here. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, yes, there is a, a comment from uh, Gorana. It's just a comment. I don't know if you can see it. It's our region is flight destination and we have huge problem now because of, of the COVID, uh, of course, and we think mm. winter is, will, be, uh, will be much bigger, the problem. Uh, and she thanks you for the presentation as well. So okay. my pleasure. If later on you have more questions, uh, you can send me an email and uh, uh, I can help you in any way. So maybe you come back home and say, oh, I forgot to ask this. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can yes. Start it out. <laughs> Very well. So I see that now we finished our questions. There's no any uh, anymore. I don't know. Um, I think that we... Uh, we finished this uh, session uh, question and answer. So I, I thank uh, Margarida for, the, for its, uh, con her contribution. And uh, also uh, I thank participants to attend uh, this webinar. I'd like to inform uh, also participants that uh, you will receive an email afterward with a link for participating to an evaluation questionnaire about this webinar. So we can really ask you to give your contribution. Uh, I'd like also to remind your next, our next appointment uh, with uh, the webinars, which will uh, be tomorrow already, uh, 30th June, uh, a model for sustainable tourism in coastal areas uh, of the Mediterranean, the case of study of uh, Naxos Island. So we will have this uh, meeting today, tomorrow. Um, after that, uh, we will have another uh, webinar uh, on 2nd July with, uh, as uh, I uh, remind for uh, with the sustainable tourism tax, uh, always with uh, Margarida. And uh, the 3rd July, we will have over tourism and post-COVID. Why calculating carrying capacity is still crucial. So this is quite interesting as well. So you, you can register to these webinars through the WinterMed project website. 
And uh, I wish you a good day. We finished with our webinar today. And uh, from my side and from uh, all the WinterMed uh, project team. Okay, bye. And thank bye. you, everybody. See you bye. In bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. I thank hope you. soon. <laughs> bye.